Hello students, welcome to Statics, I'm Dr. Stewart, and today we're going to do an example for the moment of inertia. This is example 10.4 coming from Hibbler's Statics book, and in this example, we're, find, we're asked to find the area moment of inertia about the x-axis for the following area. We see in this area, we're given that the x-axis is at the bottom of the area. We're given the dimensions. And we also can see that there is a hole within the area that we're given. There is an empty circular hole in the middle of this structure. After analyzing the structure, we can kind of list out some things that we know about this problem. We know, looking at what we're given, that we have a composite body that consists of a rectangle minus a circle. And we can uh, uh, look up the equations for the moment of inertia about the centroid of the rectangle and of the circle. So we have them as follows, where the, the moment of inertia about the centroid x prime of the rectangle is the base times height cubed divided by 12. And then the moment of inertia for the circle is uh, 1 fourth times pi times r to the power 4, where r is the radius of the circle. Now, since we are asked to find the moment of inertia about the x-axis, and the x-axis does not sit at the centroid of the rectangle or of the circle, that means we're going to need to apply the parallel axis theorem. And in that theorem, the moment of inertia about the x-axis is going to be equal to the moment of inertia from the centroid plus the area above the axes times the distance dy between the axes, between x and, and x prime. So now that we have all of that kind of reasoned out, let's start finding the moments of inertia. Let's start with finding the moment of inertia of the circle. We're going to apply the parallel axis theorem where we have the centroid uh, um, for the, the, the uh, moment of inertia for the, from the centroid for the circle. So we put that equation in. And then we put the area of the circle, pi times r squared, and then the distance, a dy squared, between the axes, which is 75. When we plug all of that in, we find that the moment of inertia of the circle from the x-axis is 11.4 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the power 4. All right, now let's find the moment of inertia of the rectangle. Again, we're going to apply the parallel axis theorem, where the moment of inertia of the x-axis is going to be the moment of the inertia from the centroid plus the area times the distance between the axes. For the, for the, from the centroid, we've got our equation. We're going to plug that right in. The area is going to be the base times the height of the uh, rectangle. And then the distance, we can pull that directly from our diagram so that the moment of inertia of the rectangle on the x-axis is equal to uh, 112.5 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the power 4. Now in our last step, we're going to want to sum up the moments of inertia to form our composite body. Now, the body that we have is a, is a rectangular shape with a, with a hole in the center of it, right? So in forming our moment of inertia, we need to create that structure again. So we're going to take the moment of inertia for the rectangle, we're going to subtract the value for the circle, and we end up with the moment of inertia of our composite body, where Ix is equal to 101 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the power 4. In solving this problem, what did we have to do? Really, we had to analyze the diagram and figure out what structures we were dealing with and, and, and recognize 
that the parallel axis theorem needed to be applied. Then we did the math and then just summed everything together. So this is a fairly straightforward uh, example. So that's all for today. I'll see everyone in the next video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Good night.